This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today, we're going to take a look at the Agris balconies. But before that, this video is brought to you by William Chapman and Big Joe Mamet. Thank you for being farm barons. So the Agra's balcony map can be found over at the farmingsimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Let me read you a bit of the description. Welcome to the Agra's balconies. This map is a free inspiration from the surroundings of a village of Agra's near the southeast of Spain. The map comes from a real survey and the climate is hot, just like the Mediterranean area. Sometimes it is also semi-arid due to the lack of rain. You will find cultures like orange, lemons, peppers, yellow melons, but also exotic fruits such as mangoes, pomegranates, and papayas. There are two new productions on the map. Soap, which is made from olive oil, water, and sodium hydroxide, and then also grapeseed oil. This map includes 50 fields, 40 olive groves, 25 vineyards, 10 plots of fruit trees, 15 woodlots, 6 commercial areas, three buildable areas, many areas that are affected by drought. The author does note that the grass is often not usable on the map, and there are a total of 186 viable plots of land. In addition, you will find that the Agris Village is on the map, and that is using some custom 3D buildings that the map author has created, as well as some custom ground textures. There is an AI network set up, to move vehicles and other such things around. There are also insects, and often you might find an eagle flying up in the skies. And then there are also some custom collectibles scattered around the map. And if you want to, you can help out the area by collecting recycling and taking it to the recycling center for a little extra cash. Let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to use the mods that we typically use when we take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. We'll say if you load this map up in a farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find a few differences between it and how we are loading this map up now in new farmer mode. That is that the starting farm does not have a farmhouse or the decorative around the farmhouse, but we do have other buildings pre-placed on the farm. In addition, we do not own any machinery in those other play modes, nor do we own any land in those play modes. Now, when we enter the map for the very first time, we will land here in the town of Agris, which is down in the south central part of the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. So you zoom out, you will see that we have quite the collection of things on this map. We have several grape areas. We also have several olive areas on the map. This map does include all of the standard crops available to us in Farm Sim 22. If we take a look at the lands area, you will see that we start out by owning farmland ID 101, 102, 103, and 104, in addition to farm IDs 1, 2, 3, and 4. 101 is the starting farm in any other play mode. You can buy this for $89,304. Then we have olive areas in farm ID 103. Then we have fields in field one, two, three, and four. This map also has a multitude of productions. Let's just say there are 57 productions built into the map at the start. 13 large greenhouses, 40 exotic orchards. We also have an oil and soap mill and a grape processing center. All of those are pre-placed on the map. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. Farmland lease screen is going to show us all of the viable farm lands that are available on the map, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include any fields, which field or fields are included, and then ultimately how much is that farmland going to cost us. As you can see that overall, the lower farmland numbers are lining up with respect to the farmland ID number and the fields all the way up to 50. Then at 51, we start looking at 
farmland IDs that do not include any fields. And now at this point, let's go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. And the field calculator screen is going to show us all of the viable fields and how large those specific fields are. We'll then be able to cross-reference those field numbers with the farmland ID numbers to then see specifically how much it's going to cost to buy any one given field. Taking a look at our crop counter, I do believe that we have a little bit of a custom crop counter here in Farm Sim 22 on this map. For example, if we happen to harvest barley early on in June, we can turn that around and either plant corn or sorghum or olives in order to do a little bit of a double crop. Now, if we take a look at our prices screen, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game crops that are available to us in a farm sim 22. One thing we do not have the ability to do is sell any wool on this particular map. In addition, we also do not have the ability to sell logs, nor do we have the ability to sell grass or hay on this particular map. Now, with respect to our base game productions, we do indeed have the ability to sell all of our base game production items. And then we also have some new production items. Do not have the ability to buy bulk lime. We do have a stone crusher. If you are playing this map with the platinum expansion, we do not have the ability to sell any of the platinum expansion items. And also if you are playing this map with precision farming, we do not have a way of selling our separated manure, but we do have grape seed oil. We also have our sodium hydroxide that we can buy from the shop. We have soap, chili peppers, yellow melons, pomegranates, mangoes, papayas, oranges, and lemons. Taking a look at our vehicle overview screen, we do have a decent list of starting equipment. All of it is owned, none of it is leased, and overall, most of it has fairly low operating hours and fairly well maintained. We do not have any animals at the start. We do have contracts available. We also have some custom AI farmer portraits. We do own the oil mill and soap factory at the start. And if we take a look at our soap recipe, you'll see it's going to require 20 units of olives, four units of water, and one unit of sodium hydroxide in order to make 15 units of soap. And in fact, we already start out with 20,000 units of olives. 4,000 units of water, and 1,000 units of sodium hydroxide. With respect to our grape processing center, we have the ability to not only make raisins and grape juice, we also have the ability to make grape seed oil. We start out with 60,000 liters worth of grapes in this production facility at the start. For grape seed oil, we're going to take 90 units of grapes. We're going to make 60 units of grape juice with that and then 10 units of grape seed oil. This map has 20 custom collectibles also available on the map, as I said earlier. Let's go ahead and take a look at the precision farming soil map. This is a rather interesting soil map because we have a fair amount of areas that are not defined fields. But as you can see, in the north, we have a bit of loam and sandy loam through areas like field 44, 43, 26, 47, 48, 8, and 9. We have kind of a swath of silty clay there. And then to the south, we also have some more loam and sandy loam. Let's go ahead and take a look at our starting fleet. We start out with the small Landini Rex 4. 070 GT tractor. We then have the Landini 7 230 Robo 6 medium tractor. Then we have the Broad 9090X olive harvester. We have the Klaus Torion 956 Sinus wheel loader. We have the New Holland L318 skid steer. We've got our 2017 pickup truck. We have a pair of Brantner trailers in the DD24073 2 
XXL Dolly trailer. Then we also have a Brightener Z18051 slash 2 XXL Power Flex Dolly trailer. We have our Hardy Mercury 4000L sprayer for our groves and our vines. We then have the TMC Cancelia. We have three mulchers in the TMS 2300D, the TDE 220, and the TPN 140. We have the Joskin Aquatrans water trailer. For our front loader, we have a pair of pallet forks. For our skid steer loader, we also have a pair of pallet forks. And we have a 750 kilogram front weight. Taking a look at our mods and DLCs, we do have some custom items that are part of the map. And that is a barrel of sodium hydroxide, 250 liters. And it is going to cost us a thousand dollars. Remember, we're going to need this for our soap production. Now, what I'm going to do real quick is tab into our grape harvester, or sorry, our olive harvester, in order to come check out our starting farm. Now, the first thing you may notice at the starting farm is the sheds. These sheds are permanently built into the map. We cannot sell them. We do have a nice poster here in the shed that's going to walk us through the new productions. Water, olive oil, and sodium hydroxide, which we've already seen in order to make soap. Grapes are going to make grapeseed oil. And then all we're going to need for lemon, orange, papaya, mango, pomegranate, chili pepper, and melons is going to be some water. Got the rest of our equipment over here in this shed. We have our farmhouse. Now, with respect to are the farms customizable? Well, on this farm, they are really not customizable. We do have the ability to sell the fencing around the farm area. We also have the ability to sell the farmhouse and the decorative items around the farmhouse. But that's it. That's all we have the ability to do. The silo, the sheds, they are permanently a part of the map. We've got our sleep trigger and we have a rather interesting water texture over here for our pool. Here we have our silo. Again, this is permanently a part of the map. So we have our dump point and our fill pipe. Now, also with respect to build mode, let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have as far as custom buildings and such that are part of the map. We do not have any custom buildings that are a part of this map. Nor do we have any custom silos that we can pre-place, silo extensions, or containers, tools. We do have the ability to put down the farmhouse, should we so wish. As far as production goes, we have the custom oil mill and soap factory we can pre-place. We also have the custom grape processing center that we can place to put down our grape seed oil. On our selling points, we do not have any custom selling points. We do have a custom large greenhouse, which is gonna allow us to make our mangoes as well as our peppers. But what is interestingly missing from this map is the ability to place additional exotic orchards, which I would expect to be either listed here under orchards or greenhouses, which is where we have seen other modded type orchards in other maps. We have base game generators, base game animals. We also have base game decorations. We do have some custom ground textures. Let's go ahead and put those down. So we have our animal mud. We have concrete. We have our asphalt dirt, forest ground, we have another forest ground, grass, gravel, 
Then we have dirt, very cracked dry dirt. Another shade of that dry dirt. Then another shade of that dry dirt. We have concrete. It's more like pavers. We have gravel. And then lastly, we have some more gravel. As far as plants go, we have fairly standard bushes and weeds. And then we have fairly standard trees. Now let's take a look at these ground textures. Some of these are base game ground textures and some of these are clearly customized ground textures. So there we've got our base game animal mud. Now with respect to the custom ground textures, these are, as best as I can tell, flat 2D textures. You can really tell that when we get over here to the more 3D Farm Sim 22 textures. For example, this gravel. We have our FS22 forest ground. And then we move into the map forest ground, which is really just a flat picture. Of our grass, our gravel, and then this was our dirt. Another shade of that dry dirt. So you're not seeing the shadows change here at all. More dry dirt. Cobblestones. Our gravel. Now let's you know let's compare this gravel to this gravel. Then we have our last gravel here. So, and what we'll see when we get over to the town area, we do have lots of custom buildings. Very good for the credit of the mod author to be creating these buildings and texturing them. But what we have is, for the most part, on these custom buildings, fairly flat textures, which would have been fine for FS19. And earlier, but with FS22, we do have the ability to do the 3D texturing, and that is going to be part of our scoring metric. So we will be giving the map just half of a point with respect to buildings where appropriate or using the new texture technique, as well as ground textures and such. Let's go ahead and take to the skies and get a little bit of an overview of our starting farm area as well as our starting fields. We do have a water point over here. Now, while this water point is not on owned land, I was able to sell that as well. We'll see that the map has quite the rolling hills and valleys. There we have a large set of the greenhouses. Again, this map has 13 large greenhouses pre-placed. And as we continue to kind of rotate around, we're going to start seeing our orchards. The map has 40, 4, 0 exotic orchards pre-placed on the map. So you see all of these olive groves. I think the description said that there are 40 olive groves overall pre-set up. So if you are looking for a map where you wanted to do olives and you didn't want to plant olives because darn it, those are expensive. Well, here you go. This map is already set up for you with a ton of olives. Now over here, we start having our huge listing of these exotic orchards and again the exotic orchards are going to create various plants let's go ahead and buy one of these just to show you what they make they're going to make orange lemons papayas pomegranate and mango let's check out our production screen
they're all going to simply require water, four units of water for oranges, four units of water for lemons, papayas, pomegranates, and mangoes. So add water and then just activate and wait for the pallets to spawn in at. We have a whole row of these. We can sell these if you want to get rid of these exotic orchards. You can't sell them. All you have to do is go into build mode and then click on the water trigger. That will give you the option of selling these. Now it is important to note, you cannot place these back down. So if you do sell them, they will be gone permanently. So we've got our exotic orchards there. Continuing across the northern edge of the map, we have even more exotic orchards pre-placed across the northern part of the map. And then they're going to take a left turn here and make their way down a little bit. But I do want to circle back because here we have a cell point or a pair of cell points. And here at the farmer's market, This is going to allow us to see some custom products. Our soaps, our grapeseed oil. And then we have what maybe are some mangoes in there, I believe. It's hard to tell. Possibly lemons. There we have our peppers. So we make our way back kind of toward our starting farm. Here we have our modified grape processing area. And again, it's gonna make our grape seed oil as well as grapes and raisins. We have a cell point. Part two. Then we have our oil and soap factory. And then even more exotic orchards. We've got our starting farm located right there. Then our fleet of large greenhouses are located here around the center of the map. And these are greenhouses that we can pre place. So that's good to see. $10,000 per greenhouse. And these greenhouses are going to be able to make tomatoes, lettuce, strawberries, yellow melons, and chili peppers. We have some more cell points. Some more exotic orchards. Here's one of those flattened buildable areas. In fact, this particular area can be purchased for We have our stone crusher over here by field 12 and 14. Our recycling center. I mentioned in the description, we have the ability to find recycling. If we do find anything with the recycling logo, we can bring it here to the recycling center and get ourselves a little bit of money. Then over here, we have our fuel station for the map. I'm going to go ahead and make our way, my way down the eastern part of the map. And if we look across, you can see how we have the rolling hills here. A little valley through the river region. Here we have some grapes pre-placed. And 
then I would say this area down here is probably the drought stricken area and this grass would be unusable. So you wouldn't be able to mow that grass. I suspect you'd have to do create fields and then pile that up or maybe put down your olives or your grape areas. Here we have the town of Agris. All custom buildings. And this is again where we started our map experience right over there. We have another rain cell point, pallet cell point again at one of these kind of farmer's market areas. More grapes. And then, are you looking for recycling? Well, look no more, because this is where you need to be. Come in here, load up with things, and again, take those over to the other location, toss them in the container, and get yourself some money. And then afterwards, you can buy this area and uh, make use of it. Here we have the animal dealer. So if you do put some animal pens down, you have your animal dealer located right here. There's one of our butterflies, custom insects. And we'll make our way now over here to the vehicle shop. I really don't think we have much need to do a drive around on the map because really aside from all of the exotic orchards, the large greenhouses and a few of these farmers market areas there really isn't much to drive to but here we have our dealer trigger our maintenance trigger for our dealer and then we have our dealer itself with our dealer trigger and we'll go ahead and get to Mahindra even though we're not driving around just to see where our spawn point is. We've got a fairly large spawn point as well for our vehicles and implements here on the map. Now the last thing I really want to do is I want to spawn in the various custom pallets. So we have an idea of what those pallets are going to look like and how large those pallets are going to be. So we have a pallet of chili peppers, 800 liters of chili peppers. We have a pallet of grapeseed oil, 800 liters of grapeseed oil. We have a pallet of lemons, 500 liters. We have then a pallet of mangoes, 500 liters pallet of grapes or sorry oranges 500 liters pallet of papaya 500 liters pallet of pomegranate again 500 liters we have a pallet of soap 1200 liters of soap here we have our barrel of sodium hydroxide 250 liters and then finally we have a barrel of or sorry a pallet of Yellow melon, 500 liters. Once again, with respect to our scoring metric, we're going to give the map a full point with respect to production being built in. Oh my gosh, we've got 57 production items built in. Oil and soap factory. We have a great processing factory. It has been modified for grapeseed oil. 
We then also have 13 large greenhouses and 40 exotic orchards. Map definitely deserves a point there. We're going to give the map three quarters of a point with respect to being able to sell all of our base game crops, production items, and animal outputs because we are missing the ability to sell wool, grass, hay, and that is it. So three quarters of a point has been granted there. We are going to give the map just one quarter of a point with respect to can the farms be customized because the main starting farm is pre-placed with both sheds and the silo. We cannot get rid of those. And the only thing we can sell is the farmhouse and the decorative elements around the farmhouse. With respect to productions, our buildings and ground textures using the new texturing technique. While we do have some FS22 buildings using the new technique and some of the FS22 ground textures, we do have a fair bit of ground textures on that are flat 2D textures and a fair bit of the textures that are on these custom buildings that are also, once again, fairly flat. So we are going to give the map just a half a point there. And then finally, with respect to player and interactive areas being clearly marked, we are going to give the map a full point there as well. So that is going to give this map a score of three and a half out of five. Let me know what you all think about this map. Are you interested in maybe trying it out just for the sake of having the ability to really dive into olives? Olives are so expensive to pre-place. This is a perfect map to get into olives because they are just so plentiful. Same with respect to grapes. And until next time, happy farming.